Good evening everyone and um, welcome to our third episode of Grape Escape Live. Today we are going to, we're bringing on one of my favourite people. Her name is Viviana Navarrete and she is the chief winemaker at Viña Leda Winery in the Leda region in Chile. Um, so just a bit about Chile. Um, Chile has a really, really good reputation for producing really good value entry-level wines. Um, and there's a reason for that. It's one of the most sort of perfect um, conditions for growing vines. There's bags of sunshine and warmth. They've got the snowmelt from the Andes and you've also got that proximity to the Pacific, um, that kind of cooling influence as well. Um, but I think I'm right in saying that most people, most average everyday consumers probably don't go to Chile when they want to spend a little bit more money on a bottle of wine. Um, and that makes it quite difficult for premium quality Chilean producers to, to kind of succeed in our market. Um, but what I would like to say, my message to you is that you're all missing a trick if, that, um, if that's you, because the, um, the quality and the value for money for Chilean wine goes from, all, from bottom all the way to the top. So next time you want to, um, to spend a few bob on a bottle, don't forget to look at Chile as well. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about Leda, and Leda is a great example of um, really, really good value um, for money, premium Chilean wine. Um, so Leda is, um, I think, one of the most exciting wineries in Chile um, at the moment. Much like the other two wineries we've spoken about, they were really responsible for putting the whole region on the map. In fact, the region, um, the winery is named after the region or, or vice versa. Um, and um, so the, the, the region's very young. It was only founded in 2002, thanks to all the work that Vinaleda did. Um, in terms of location, it's west of Santiago um, and about 14 kilometres from the Pacific Ocean. And in fact, Vinaleda, the winery, um, they have one of their vineyards at uh, just four kilometres away from the ocean. So they really, really focus on cool climate, Chilean wine, and in particular, they also focus on um, Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir, so we'll taste a few of them um, shortly. <clears throat> um, so just a quickly, Viviana, um, who I've mentioned, who I'll invite on very, very shortly. Um, so she's the chief winemaker at, at Vignoleda. She's been working there for well over a decade now. Um, she has a degree in... Um, um, she has a degree in agricultural science. She then went to work at um, Conchi Toro for, for a number of years where she fell in love with Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and then she was very soon headhunted to be the chief winemaker at Vigna Leda, um, which she saw as a huge opportunity um, because she was really fascinated by working with that, those cooler climate um, grape varieties. Her mission, in fact, is to uh, make Chile's best cool climate um, wines. Um, and she's got a number of awards under her belt and accolades. I'm not going to name them all because I'll embarrass her. Um, but this year in 2020, she was awarded uh, Winemaker of the Year um, by Tim, in Tim Atkins' Chile Report 2020. So that's pretty awesome. Congratulations, Viviana. She's also um, a really wonderful, kind, generous, uh, lovely person. Um, and um, she makes really delicious wine. So I'm going to invite her on to join now. So just bear with me for a second. Hi, Mario. Hi, Viviana. How are you? Fine, thanks. Nice to see you. It's very nice to see you. It's been a few years. Yeah, thanks for this invitation. Oh, well, thank you so I'm much. I'm really happy to join you today. Say that again. I'm really happy to join you to today. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, well, thank you for gracing us with your presence. And I think it's also a, um, it's a bank holiday in Chile today. So extra special thank you <laughs> for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, I'm very really happy. Thank you. Everyone's waiting to hear you to talk through the two wines. So I'm going to hand it over to you. We're starting with um, Viviana, the um, later uh, single vineyard Goruma uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Yes, this Sauvignon Blanc, I love it. It's definitely, it's beautiful. It has always existed in our portfolio. Um, the name is single vineyard, Garuma. Garuma is the name of a typical bird from the coast. It's almost like a seagull. And we see it a lot in the beaches there nearby. And this wine is crafted, it's made from a selection of two blocks 
One of them has limestone in the soil, so it's bringing this minerality, which I love. Uh, it's a Sauvignon Blanc that we make mostly for, for pairing, for food. It's not just a Sauvignon Blanc as an app for aperitif or a terrace, terrace, terrace Sauvignon Blanc. Um, but I would say what I love the most is the, the, not only the perfume that it has in nose, but this salinity character that comes along. Mm. You can really taste, yeah, you can really taste that you're by the sea, can't you? And it makes me just really dream of seafood um, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Some fish tuffer. Exactly. It's, it's this kind of wine that transports you or makes you travel to the beach or um, you feel almost like the ocean in this uh, salinity character together with the citrus notes. So, so Pepe Woolbridge, I think that's Pete Woolbridge. He's one of our, he's our buyer, our, our South American buyer. He's loves, say he loves the texture in this wine. I was just noting the same thing. So how do you get the texture um, in the Sauvignon Blanc? Because there's a really nice mouth. Yeah, um, first of all, we manage the vines to produce 1.5 kilogram per vine. So it's a concentrated uh, texture, it's a concentrated grape. And then in, in the press, we make whole bunches pressing. And that necessarily is going to give you wider texture palette compared to crushing all the grapes. And we leave more turbidity. So you ferment a more turbid uh, juice and that is bringing texture into it. And finally, in this wine, we're putting 10% of big barrel, 400 liter, liter barrel fermenting, oh, and that is adding uh, extra creaminess in the palate. And of course, we do batonnage, even in stainless steel tank or in barrel. Yeah. And all of that helps to be this, to, to create this kind of creamy texture together with the vibrancy that, that it has. Yeah, there's a lot. It's delicious. So there's, there's the salinity, the creaminess. And I think there's like sort of the white flowers as well. There's a really nice floral note um, that comes through. Obviously, all the citrus fruits. And there's that slightly kind of capiscum peppery note as well that, yeah. I, that I detect on that. It's delicious. And there's loads of comments. Yeah. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you can see them coming through, but you'll get there's a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of love, a lot of love for the wine. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and it's nice because in Leda, actually, we do three different Sauvignon Blanc, very different one from each other. So in the Reserva, is this, this Reserva Sauvignon Blanc is like very up from fruit or, or yes, you, you have different fruit like tropical and citrus. It's very happy. It's very shiny with a crisp acidity. And then you come to this single vineyard, Garuma, which is a little bit more elegant. It's not as shouty as the Reserva. This one is a little bit, uh, uh, um, I would say, not as floral as the other. It's a little bit more elegant, mm -hmm. not austere, but I, I love that salinity character yeah. going on, which is definitely the identity of the wine. I think you compare, I mean, we drink a lot of Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc in the UK, like in the US and in many parts of the world, which is a, you know, they make fantastic Sauvignon Blanc, but there's a real distinction here, I think, in that character. And there's just, there's much more of a tropical, um, there's the herbaceous and, and there's the tropical than Marlborough, but there's something much more mineral and saline going on here, which is really unique and, and delicious. Yes, I like Marlborough a lot and I taste Marlborough Stop always, um, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's something on, on the elegance of, uh, especially from Leda Valley. Um, I think this greenness or herbaceous is stronger in this place, and definitely the vibrancy mm. of the wine, which is it has to be is a must to have in a Sauvignon Blanc. This uh, long palate, but not only crunchy, it's this vibrancy and long palate with, together with the the creamy texture. It's like almost a creamy acidity into it, which I love. Okay, we could probably talk about Sauvignon Blanc for another hour, but look, I'm going to move you on now to the Las Brisas Pinot Noir. Here it is. In, in Leda Valley, we do four different, in Leda Winery, we do four different Pinot Noir, and one of them is this single vineyard, Las Brisas, and the name Las Brisas is because the three blocks that we use, it's not three blocks, but it's three polygons that we use for this wine are looking into the ocean. So they receive all the breezes from the sea. And that's why we call it Las Brisas. 
is the last Pinot Noir that we harvest, um, and it's associated only to granitic soil. So there's a soil study that we did uh, last year, um, like four years ago, and separate all the soils that are pure granito with, uh, with iron and use it for this uh, wine. So here we're looking for, especially this like sinewy te texture in the palate, but bringing all this beautiful raspberry or cassis or, or almost cherry aromas in, in, in that I think is beautiful um, in the Pinot Noir. It's, you know, it's a very challenging grape variety to work with, the Pinot. It's almost, um, it's a nightmare from the vineyard because it cannot dehydrate. Uh, you have a two days option for harvesting. If you choose, if you lost that day, you obtain a marmalade and high alcohol. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's really difficult to, to work in the vineyards and then in the cellar as well. You almost cannot touch the grapes, try to do it in open vats with punching down regime uh, and not touch it too much for avoiding extra maceration or extra tannins in the wine because you don't want them. Uh, and well, here we're working with whole bunches to have this minerality that adds, of course, the whole bunches. Uh, it gives more, um, it cuts the sweet aromas that you can find because what we talked before, the lot of sunlight that we have in this South Hemisphere all the countries that produce it in the South Hemisphere has a lot of sunlight. So the stems allows to cut these maybe sweet aromas and turn them into more fresh and acid aromas. And also the, the whole cluster bring more floral character into the wine. So it's a very good tool to play with. And uh, also in this wine, I'm using only 30% of French oak barrel to age. Years ago, I used 100%. Right. Now I have been decreasing the oak. So what, made, what, made you when, change? what made you change from um, using 100% oak to, to using less oak? Why, why did you make that decision? Because I, normally when you start doing Pinot Noir, there's a lot of recipes that you have in your mind and you want to follow them. But when, then when you afterwards understand the great quality that you have in your terroir, uh, there's no meaning to use a lot of oak. So if you have beautiful grape and beautiful expression of the grape typicity, there's no uh, reason to use 100% of oak because then in the bottle, you're giving to the people a good percentage of mocha and chocolate mm -hmm. and tobacco. And when you want to craft wines and show the origin or the identity, you don't want to show that all the flavors of the barrel so we started to decrease that amount and go into other type of vessels like concrete or like uh, casks without any toasting that work pretty beautiful with uh, with the pinot noir and they help a lot in the expression so it helps to 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 deliver the floral the perfume and the vibrance in the palate definitely it's, it's so delicious. It's one of my favorite wines um, to buy. And it's just, if you compare to the Pinot Noirs out there and the prices they sometimes can fetch, this is honestly one of the best value Pinot Noirs that you can find. Um, and it's, it's just, it's got that, someone else said something, I'm sorry I didn't catch it, but that perfect balance between fruit and savory. Because um, you can get some Pinots that are really sort of sweety and a bit too much and some that, you know, quite hard work and this feels like a lovely balance it's meaty there's some really nice kind of fresh herbs there's a bit of spice it's all that cherry and raspberry um and it's 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 there's loads of fruit but it's still quite savory which i think this must be very difficult to achieve so um there was, exactly. there's been a conversation going on as well about how will this will this improve with age so matt mark hills asked if it will improve with age or ha what will happen if you if you leave it put it down yes definitely it, it improves in fact i try to bottle it uh, and give at least six months in the bottle um I would say this wine would age perfectly for seven, eight years. It is under screw cap, which I love, love for aromatic grape varieties and Pinot Noir is an, is an aromatic grape variety. So um, 
It has also a low pH. It has 3.45, so that helps a lot in having a good aging. And, and, and definitely when you have a good quality and a good terroir, it helps to have a good uh, aging. I wouldn't say 20 years because the idea in this wine also is to, to enjoy the nice perfume and fruit. And with the time, that fruit, you lose it, and the floral aromas, you lose it, and it turns into more spiciness. So if you want to, to enjoy a beautiful and fresh Pinot, I would say seven years is good. Thank you. It's just such a joy um, to talk to you um, and such, a, such an honour to do it on this platform as well with all these listeners. Um, the way you describe wine, talk about it, it's just, um, it's captivating and it's been just such a joy. So thank you. Thanks, Harriet. Thanks a lot for the people who joined us and I'm really happy to, to have this moment and share it with you. So thank you very much.